standards that ask students to prove theorems can be quite challenging for both the student and the teacher. Oftentimes, students struggle with where to begin in the proof process, and teachers are in a quandary as to how many scaffold steps they should offer their students in the proof process. Standard MGSE 9 through 12 G.SRT.4 is one such standard. In this standard, students will prove theorems about triangles that include a line parallel to one side of a triangle divides the other two sides proportionally and its converse, as well as the Pythagorean theorem using similar triangles. Students' prior work with parallel lines and the angles formed when parallel lines are cut by transversals, along with their work on the angle-angle criterion for similarity of triangles in the eighth grade, will play a factor in the establishment of the standard. In Unit 3 of the eighth grade, students had exposure to the Pythagorean theorem and did their first investigation into proofs of the Pythagorean theorem and its converse. One way to review the similarity standards from 8th grade would be to practice determining if triangles are similar using problems featured from the Math Shell Center. They are the same angles. Yeah, it's deletion. So the angles are the same. So are the angles congruent? Yes, yes. they are. What part of the triangles are not congruent? The length of each side. The length of each side. As students begin their formal investigation of the triangle proportionality theorem, also known as the side splitter theorem, they could engage in a notice and wonder activity using the GeoGebra applet. Don't provide too much information for the students and simply let them play in the applet to see what they notice. The E, this gets all lopsided. The D, you can move up and down, but the B, you cannot. What do you think that segment in, that's inside the triangle and the one at the bottom, the base, do you think there's any relationship with those two? They are parallel. Are you, were you ever able to get that ratio to be different of the two segments on the sides? Did the, the fraction, I noticed the fractions changed, but did the end result ever change to something mm, different? No. 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 Another approach to the initial investigation of this theorem would be to actually have students get their hands on the tools of measurement such as rulers and protractors and use the parallel lines of notebook paper to construct two similar triangles, measuring the angles inside those triangles to verify that they are actually similar, and then measure the segments formed using the parallel line that intersects the two sides of the triangle to establish that triangle proportionality theorem relationship. This activity is an adaptation of the task titled Triangle Proportionality Theorem, which can be found in Unit 2 of the GSE Geometry Frameworks and in Unit 1 of the GSE Analytic Geometry Frameworks. This task has students investigate the side splitter theorem. Another component of standard GSRT4 is the proof of the Pythagorean theorem using triangle similarity. There are different approaches to proving the Pythagorean theorem using similar triangles. One could be providing a drawing for the students using the given facts and letting them grapple through the proof process. Another option would be to provide a representational approach with scaffold steps or to actually provide students the opportunity to work with concrete materials to manipulate in the proof process. Illustrative math features a proof version of the Pythagorean theorem with similar triangles that allows students to take the given facts, grapple with the mathematics, and attack the proof. The Georgia Frameworks features an option of a scaffold approach where students will mentally manipulate parts of similar triangles to see the components that match up in the proof process. A final version would be to actually allow students the hands-on approach of constructing the similar triangles and proving the Pythagorean theorem while actually manipulating the triangles in the process. When we finish cutting this, how many triangles are we going to have to work with? Three. Three triangles. Anything special about those three triangles, Jackson? They're all right triangles. All right, so this one, this big one, triangle one. All right, and this one, 
that's the pink one for y'all. That's your triangle too. Alright? So are these I'll read the angles out for you. Okay, on so this one. The alright. Top is big A, right? Yeah, big A. Oh wait, do we need to turn it this way? Sure. Okay. Big A. Alright, that one. And then little B right here. Yes. D. This one's easier. Capital okay. C. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can flip it that way too. And then sure. okay. little key. Alright, A. Big A. C. C. Okay. Big B. Yes. A. Little A. C. And B. Sweet. Have you lined them up so that their corresponding sides match up? There we go. Can you guys establish any relationships with these three triangles? They're all right triangles. How could you verify that they are all right triangles? You can line them up like this. You can line the angles up and see that that's congruent and then... I like the way you line those up so we can see that they all contain a right angle. As student groups complete the construction of their three triangles, take a little bit of time to allow them to investigate the relationships in the triangles as demonstrated by this group. Students compare angles and sides to notice important relationships. Are those sides, do they have to be exactly the same or do no. they have a different relationship? They have to be, um, they have to have a ratio. Exactly, they have to share a common ratio. You would get CQ equals BB. B times B is B squared. Students will now apply the properties of similar triangles in the other two triangles in this proof and put these steps together to finish their proof of the Pythagorean theorem using similar triangles. To close out the lesson, you could offer a strategy called My Favorite No to reveal any misconceptions that students might have about the standards that you have addressed in class. This strategy can be viewed on the teaching channel. You could use this strategy really at any point in the lesson, beginning, middle, or end, or any moment that you wanted a formative assessment on student knowledge. An example of how the My Favorite No strategy could be used with Standard G SRT 4. Students could be given this diagram, or one similar, in which they're asked to find the values of X and Y. Student work would then be used to highlight common misconceptions. What common misconceptions are occurring in these student work samples? Share and discuss with your colleagues the common misconceptions held by these students.